part three of what I think will be four parts in a series talking about angels as one of the rational spirits. Here we want to talk about basically how angels are in the affairs of men. As I have said all along, angels are rational, they are personal. You can, as you think of yourself and being, having a personality, having gifts, um, having a motive and an agenda, going about using the power that God has given you. Uh, our power mostly is our physical ability to be able to interact with our environment, um, but also our mind. And in the same way, an angels are no different. Um, I don't think that I've said this before, but Paul obliquely sort of makes a reference to angels having a language, um, which is one of the markers of a rational being. First Corinthians 13, 1, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And why would he say tongues of angels if there isn't such a thing as tongues of angels? Uh, it applies to me that they they speak to each other, right? And so they're, they're personal. And um, angels are very much so involved in the affairs of men. Um, we've read previously from the author of Hebrews that angels are ministering spirits that God sends to minister to those who will, will receive salvation. Um, so the first question would be, how are the angels in the affairs of men? And um, applying some other wisdom that we've spoken of generally with respect to spirits is that they're mostly invisible. And so an angel can be in your bedroom or in the church sanctuary or on the street or in your car with you or anywhere else and you would never actually know it because they are invisible just like the air around you is invisible and they're not um, choosing to reveal themselves. Um, so the point is is that angels angels can disguise themselves. Obviously we have many examples in the Bible of angels appearing in dreams. Um, angels appeared to Joseph and um, telling him you know to go to Egypt to leave Egypt um, among others. Jacob and so on um, and then we uh, we also have angels appearing as men uh, I just want to read this verse Hebrews 13 to be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware and so how, how is it possible that you could entertain an angel and not know it well because the angel appears to you to just be a, a person you know probably a person who's just passing through. I mean, it'd be kind of hard to believe that, it, that an angel is, is appearing as a person and you've known them your whole life or something like that. Um, they're probably just a, some person passing through. Uh, and probably, I suspect, a lot of times they, they may um, not be some kind of fancy pants, sophisticated looking person, but they may well look like... Uh, somebody that needs help um, and you know why would God do this like maybe he's he's testing us um, I don't really know I guess I really have to give that one some thought why why would God allow angels it seems maybe kind of a little bit deceptive they're they're um, relaying and sticking with the story that they are humans you know with a certain uh, activity that they're engaged in but that kind of clearly isn't true because they're not humans and so they're, they're sent there for a purpose but you know my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways just as um, the heavens are higher than the earth so my thoughts are higher than your thoughts so uh, I don't know I don't know what the angels are doing uh, I mean we, we're gonna see a little bit of what's happening but um, perhaps they're, if nothing else, they're just observing the affairs of men. God uses them. What we, we talked about last time, the watchman angels that go to and throw, throw throughout the earth. And so they're just, they're watching. They're keeping, they're just keeping track of what's going on. 
does God need them? Doesn't he know? Actually, from before the beginning, everything that's going to happen, does he need somebody else to tell him? But nonetheless, he, he has him there because that's what he wanted to do. He can do whatever he wants. So, um, so we have angels that are appearing as men, which is why we're able to entertain them and, and not know that they're angels. Entertained angels unawares. Uh, I have a, under the um, number 17 on page 14, uh, spirits can disguise themselves. And the, the case that I give here is um, the Lord appearing, and this was Jesus. Um, no one at any time has ever seen God. Um, Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God, right? And so Genesis 18, 1 through 2, the Lord appeared to him, Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. One of them was Jesus, and the other two were angels. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent and bowed to the ground. Um, Genesis 18, 22, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And then in Genesis 19, I mean, so, so it kind of appears, like if you're just reading it, kind of superficially you realize you're thinking like okay it's just three guys the lord and two other guys but then we're told specifically in genesis 19 1 and there came two angels to sodom at even right and so now we're told that the people whom abraham thought were men and whom were described as men in chapter 18 are now described as angels in chapter 19 and so we we can get a sense of how it is like sort of like the the logistical or the practical method that angels can be involved in the affairs of men because they're able to dis disguise themselves in a convincing way as a as a human okay uh, so let's um, read three uh, scriptures of angels being involved in the affairs of men. These are all New Testament scriptures, but they're they're not um, in a in a way that we necessarily recognize that they're there, right? And so, for example, after Jesus resurrects him, whenever the women and the disciples uh, went to the tomb, there was there were angels there, a young man clothed in shining white clothing, right? Um, the Lord is not here. Remember, remember when he said he was going to be resurrected? Like, well, here we are. So, right, that 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 was a case where clearly angels were involved. Whenever the heavenly hosts surrounded the shepherds, when the baby Jesus was in the manger, right, in Bethlehem, um, that was a clear case of the angels, as angels being involved in the affairs of men but here what i'm talking about is angels taking an interest in what's going on but we don't know that that's what's happening okay and so three scriptures the first one first peter 1 10 through 12 of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you searching what or what manner or of time the spirit of christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us did they minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you by the holy ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into and so they're almost they're they're almost portrayed here as like agents or investigators or um, just watchers witnesses some, something like that um, 1 Timothy 5.21 so Paul is writing to Timothy and he says to him I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that, um, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality and so the implication here uh, is that just as as God and Jesus are involved intimately in the hearts and affairs of men, 
the the angels are there in the mix somehow um, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 10 and so this is talking about um, the role of women in the church and specifically head coverings um, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels and so the, the context is specifically in public worship and so the implication is kind of like okay well um, interpreting this verse is difficult and frankly the Lord hasn't revealed to me exactly what the angels are doing but it seems evident enough in the context that um, when the, the what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11 is that women are to cover their heads in the context of prayer and prophesying right and so they're they're engaged in spiritual activity and then also um, the spiritual activity seems to be in the congregation in the church as opposed to just by yourself specifically and so then he says and because of the angels and so the implication is you know why would the angels care or how would they know unless they were there remember angels are finite personal beings just like you and I are finite personal beings we can't be two places at once they can only be one place at a time they may be really, really big, in which case they maybe they can see farther or, or they're higher up or some such thing, but they're still in only one place at a time. And so w they can't be in China and the United States at the same time. They're finite. God is in China and the United States at the same time through the power of the Holy Spirit, but angels are not, right? And so they're, they are they're witnessing the men and the women and what the men and the women are doing and then we're further told by Paul to the Ephesians um, perhaps why at least part of the reason why the angels are taking an interest in the affairs of men Ephesians chapter 3 verses 9 through 10 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And so God is actually using, you know, believe it or not, despite the disunity, despite the denominationalism, despite the frankly rebellion and falling away apostasia in the American church that's happening right now you know the inflating donut budgets and all this like um, God is using the things that are happening in the church and he's using his work in the church the, the Holy Spirit is guiding and leading us Jesus is the head right spirit and truth God is using his work that he's doing in the church to teach the principalities and powers and demonstrate through his work in the church the manifold wisdom of God and so this word manifold variegated many-sided wisdom and so if you think of like you're looking at like a, a, a diamond or something and it's got all the little facets on it, you know, all the different angles and all the different perspectives that you could take looking at the, at the rock in the same way, like, like God, they, they are seeing perhaps a grander picture of God's wisdom in the church and he, he's actually using it to teach them and to reveal his glory and his wisdom to him. And so these are some of the interest that angels are taking in the affairs of man and then of course also the methodology by which they're able to observe um, the affairs of men.